We asked 100 people, how important is this event in your life? And 78% of them said, this is the single most important experience of my entire life. What does it mean that a whole area of research is not investigated for 30 years? Think about the fact that when LSD was legal, professional researchers were consistently reporting cures of chronic alcoholism with one 500 gamma dose. One dose. Such an effect actually is unprecedented within the field of psychiatry. I couldn't understand why these medicines weren't available to people who were suffering. I know without a doubt that MDMA saved my life. How could this have been such a big part of psychiatry and that I never heard about it, completely buried in my training? Not only is it time, it's way past time for science to, again, look at this in a very careful and rigorous way because we can't afford not to. Over the past few years, there has been a huge revival in the scientific study of psychedelic assisted therapy. And today I would like to share with you why I think that we are on the verge of a breakthrough with these new treatments that just might revolutionize not only the field of mental health, but humanity at large. The evidence is there. These things really do help certain people under certain circumstances and to dismiss them could deny people not only a very valuable treatment strategy, but maybe the most effective treatment. In a way, this is nothing new. Our ancestors have used these substances for thousands of years as tools to heal and awaken. To me, it seems very bizarre and strange and sad that we are legally denied from using these ancient tools that have seemingly infinite potential to help us explore our own inner world. I can't think of a right that is more fundamental and basic than that. But let's look at the science here, because we now have study after study from some of the best research institutions in the world demonstrating that these psychedelic treatments are non-toxic, non-addictive, and can actually heal mental illness and substance addiction with a higher success rate than any other treatment that we have ever known. Multiple studies indicate that one treatment with ayahuasca or mushrooms or a substance called ibogaine can heal drug addiction with a 60 to 70% success rate. To have one single dose of medicine have that kind of success rate in healing addiction is simply unprecedented. It's unlike anything we've ever seen before. Think about how huge this could be. Think about the potential here. A whole new paradigm of treating substance addiction at a time when we're facing an opioid crisis that's destroying thousands of lives, as well as the ongoing issue of alcoholism, which is prevalent on just about every corner of the globe. Not only is the psychedelic experience completely life-changing, but it can and it will bring a lot more healing to a lot more people. We saw in six hours what you would often see in six years of therapy if we incorporate psilocybin into existing short-term therapies like the therapies I used to work in that we can make them so much more effective, so much more powerful. I want to bring your attention to a study that was recently done at Johns Hopkins Medical Center, which to my understanding is one of the leading research institutions in the world. This research is described in an article called Psilocybin Produces Substantial and Sustained Decreases in Depression and Anxiety in Patients with Life-Threatening Cancer. This was a study with terminally ill cancer patients who very understandably often develop severe symptoms of depression and anxiety. Here's a direct quote from that article. High-dose psilocybin produced large decreases in clinician and self-rated measures of depressed mood and anxiety, along with increases in quality of life, life meaning, and optimism, and decreases in death anxiety. At a six-month follow-up, these changes were sustained with about 80% of participants continuing to show clinically significant decreases in depressed mood and anxiety. 80% of participants six months after their psilocybin treatment had no more symptoms of depression. 
and reported general increases in their quality of life. These numbers speak for themselves. This is undeniably incredible, and once again, it is simply unprecedented in the field of mental health. Roland Griffiths was one of the lead researchers of this study, and here's what he had to say in a recent TED Talk. These effects are really quite remarkable. What we're showing here is a single exposure to a substance producing substantial and enduring antidepressant and anxiolytic effects. 80% of the volunteers in that study, after having one or two high doses of psilocybin, reported that the experience was among the five most personally meaningful and spiritually significant experiences of their lives. Such an effect actually is unprecedented within the field of psychiatry. We now have science and spirituality fusing together. This research demonstrates that if used in the right way, psilocybin can induce these profound, spiritual, mystical, ego-dissolving experiences where you open up to a bigger picture of life. Your awareness expands. You see beyond the veil, so to speak. A large percentage of those people had what we call a classic mystical type experience. It's really fascinating to consider why we seem to be wired, hardwired, to receive this mystical, psychedelic experience. And there is something incredibly healing and life-changing about these mystical experiences. Somehow, deep within, you feel and you know that in the midst of it all, everything is okay. Everything is well. And not only that, but there is a profound beauty and magic to this miracle of life. From this bigger perspective, your problems, your struggles are reframed. You gain a new perspective. You see things in a new way. In 2011, there was another major study with a different substance called MDMA, which has proved to be incredibly powerful in healing trauma and PTSD. And this study found that after one dose of MDMA, combined with professional therapy and supervision, 83% of participants no longer had symptoms of PTSD at a two-month follow-up. The effects after the first treatment were profound. I would have said a 60% reduction in uh, my symptoms immediately. I felt a, a, a mighty change had occurred. So here we have study after study demonstrating that some psychedelic therapies are more effective by a long shot than any other treatment that currently exists. And yet while the scientific evidence keeps growing, psychedelic medicines continue to be more stigmatized and feared than alcohol, cigarettes, painkillers, and cocaine. Which is really interesting to consider why that is. The drug war itself has never really been about reducing drug abuse. Right. It's been about persecuting minorities. It's been about jobs. It's been about money, private prisons, and SWAT teams, and all of this. When the state sends us to prison uh, for essentially exploring our own consciousness, uh, this is a grotesque abuse of human rights. It's a, it's a fundamental wrong. If, if I, as an adult, am not you know, sovereign, over my own consciousness, then I'm absolutely not sovereign over anything. Psychedelic therapy is not some magical silver bullet that's going to cure every person on the planet. Not at all. And it does have risks. All I'm saying is that we now have a huge body of concrete scientific evidence demonstrating that there is incredible promise, there is incredible potential here at a time that we desperately need it. Beyond that, this is bringing together science and spirituality. This is opening new avenues of exploration into the nature of consciousness and the nature of reality itself. And what could be more fascinating or important than that? The implications are, are mind-boggling on any number of levels. What's, what is the nature of that experience? Why do we have those experiences? What do they mean? This research has the potential to uh, open us to new understandings about the mind, about spirituality, about religion, about human potentials and capacities. It's been so moving to witness these experiences and to see what our true potential could be. How we could relieve suffering through experiences that we seem wired for. In the years ahead, it is clear that no matter what, 
This will play a huge and significant role in the awakening of humanity. I'm so excited to see where this takes us. And as always, it is my absolute honor and pleasure to share this adventure with you. So uh, now we're sort of projecting 2035 is when I think psychedelics will become legal for anybody to experience on their own outside of medicine, outside of religion.